Station. This is the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Okay. We've got 20 very excited young people here that have some questions for you, so we're going to get started. Hi, I'm Allison Pope, uh, seventh grade, Patton Middle School. And how long do you have to train to be an astronaut? Hi, Allison. Well, that's a uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, at NASA, we train for several years before you could f fly in space for the uh, the first time. At uh, you, when I was a, a new astronaut, from the time I started until I flew in space was about three and a half years. Some some people, uh, it, and it just it depends on luck mostly, but it takes a little bit longer. But I like to think I've been training for this job since I was in kindergarten. So uh, a lot of school, a lot of uh, different types of training before I got to NASA, and uh, a lot of uh, training even, even today, even when we're living aboard the space station, we still do training here. I'm Zara McKay. I'm in uh, seventh grade from Denoy Middle School, and I wanted to ask, what's the toughest part of astronaut training? Well, I would say that sometimes we have uh, hard jobs and we do our best, but we still make mistakes. And yet your job is to keep going and just do your best the next time. And for me, that's sometimes a hard thing, and, uh, and so I just uh, work at it. I'm from Washer Cat. Oh. This is Evelyn Mendoza from Washer Elementary, second grade. And her question is How difficult is it to sleep on the space? Well, Evelyn, that's also a very good question. And, um,. You know, that's interesting. When I flew on the space shuttle, and I was up here for just a short time, it was very, very hard to sleep. But now that I've been here a long time, it's pretty easy to sleep. I actually sleep pretty well in space, um, floating. But I still look forward to sleeping in a bed, and I'm not sure why, but I do. Hi, my name is Chris. Hi, my name is Christian Frack, and I'm in second grade, and I'm from Washer Elementary. Um, my question is, is it hard to swallow in space? Well, I was hoping that somebody would ask about food in space. Swallowing is actually no problem, and it doesn't feel any different. But I will say that eating can be challenging. We have food. A lot of it is sort of dehydrated food that we put water into, and it becomes food that we can... Um, we can chew up and swallow. But some of it, some of the things we bring from home are just like things that you might like. Like I like uh, um, little cranberries, dried cranberries, and I like jelly beans. But then how to eat these in space? This is truly challenging because as soon as I open this bag, all of these are going to want to come out. And so I'm going to have to have just a couple come out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we have to find them. And I, I found that the only way to really do this is, first of all, to be careful. And second of all, you sort of shoot them into your mouth. Like that. And sometimes we chew with our mouths open just for that reason. My name is Emerson Grau. I'm in first grade and go to Washer Elementary. What can you see when you look up the window? Well, when we look out the window, Emerson, um, the thing that we see and notice the most is planet Earth. Uh, some of our best windows face the Earth, and it's uh, very uh, blue and very beautiful. So it's uh, what we look at the most 
from the window. But we can also see uh, see stars if we're on the dark side of, of Earth and uh, planets. And we can see, of course, the sun and the moon. And the uh, blackness of space. We can see the atmosphere of Earth, which is very noticeable. And, uh, you know, sometimes we could see uh, shooting stars or, or other satellites, although those are really, really hard to see. Hi, I'm Laura Denny. Does everyone get together for meals or hang out during free time? Laura, there are six of us here on the space station. And we have two Americans, one Italian, and three Russians. When we have two kitchens, two bathrooms, and everybody has a place to sleep. And at mealtime, I would say at least a few of us always try to get together, although not all six every day, just because we all have different schedules, all have different jobs that we have to do throughout the day, and even sometimes almost past dinner time. But we try to all six get together, I would say about well, at least once a week, maybe more often, and just uh, talk about our days and how things are going and, and what exciting things are happening. For example, our Russian partners are going on a spacewalk on Friday. We can't wait to watch. My name is Haley Trevor. I'm in fifth grade from Subiel Elementary. Has there ever been a party on the ISS? And did you celebrate with cake? Well, we do have uh, little birthday parties uh, when it's somebody's birthday. And, um, you know, we certainly celebrate other holidays here. As far as a cake, there hasn't been a cake uh, since uh, I've been up here. We certainly have some desserts, and we have uh, these little brownies that you might see in your school lunchroom called, uh, well, I'm not going to say their name because I'm not allowed, but uh, um, we, uh, we don't uh, have cake like you would normally um, have cake. My name is Kevin Chang, and I'm in fifth grade, and what has been your most proudest or most fun moment so far during your mission? Well, most fun is actually waking up every single morning and realizing that I am still here on the space station. I mean, I grew up as a scientist, and then I was really excited about trying to be an astronaut, became an astronaut, but still part of you just doesn't believe that you'd really get to live in space. And every morning when I wake up, I'm floating. I don't know which way is up or down. I have to figure out, like, where is the door of my little crew quarters. And I'm just so excited to float around here. So that's the most fun. And, you know, the most proud, it's actually kind of hard work up here. And um, often it takes me a long time to do it. And so when I'm actually doing all my work and I do it all right and I'm on the schedule, then I'm really proud. My name is Nicholas Howard. What job takes up most of your day? Um, that's a hard question to answer because our days are, uh, are very, uh, different. No, no two days up here are alike. Um, you know, we certainly spend a lot of time on maintenance of the station. We spend a lot of time doing science, uh, a lot of time doing housekeeping kind of tasks, other, you know, operational things, maybe flying the robot arm or... Um, you know, in some cases supporting uh, spacewalks or maybe doing spacewalks. Today, most of my day is spent uh, doing a science experiment that is a uh, fluid uh, physics experiment. And between that and the exercise I'm doing, uh, that's pretty much my entire day today. Hello, my name is Carly Lynn Thorkelson. My question is, what can you see when you look out in space? When I look out there, I see I see the stars, and they look much like the stars that you would see. I know out there in Oregon, it's really nice and dark when you're not right near the city, and you can see a lot of stars. To me, up here in, in space, I feel like uh, 
I can they look a little deeper to me instead of just one flat black sky with stars in it. I almost I feel like it has some depth, and I feel like it's my neighborhood that I live in. Just like you live in a neighborhood down there on Earth, uh, I feel like I'm learning my way around the stars. Hi, I'm Amanda Scheller. I'm in ninth grade, and I participate in the ESA program through McMinnville High School. And my question is. Do you have a lot of room on the ISS, especially personal space, like for sleeping? Um, the space station is pretty big. Um, you know, there's, uh, geez, I don't know how many modules there are now. There are probably, you know, at least 10 maybe uh, pressurized modules on board the space station. And uh, so we have about as much room as you might have in, let's say, a, a large house, maybe a four-bedroom house. You know, some of that space is taken up with uh, equipment because imagine your house, if you could never leave or you couldn't leave for six months, how much stuff you would need in it. Um, as far as personal space, we each have a, what's called a crew quarters, which is where we sleep. It's, uh, you know, where we might uh, do email um, uh, or you know maybe watch a movie um, and that space is uh, is fairly small it's probably about the size of like a you know a small bathroom in a, in a house or maybe a, I, I, I hate to use the analogy of a phone booth because they don't really exist anymore but it's uh, maybe a little bit bigger than than if you can remember what a uh, or seen in movies what an old telephone booth looked like hi my name is Nathan Lozman and my question is with so many nations working on the International Space Station is it challenging to work together I wouldn't say it's challenging for me. It's one of the parts that I enjoy the most. Um, being up here in space is very special, and I think it's something that, you know, it, space belongs to the whole Earth, not just any one country. So I'm proud to be up here with representatives from many different countries. I think languages um, and, and understanding different languages can be very helpful. And so we try to we um, we all train in Russia because we. Uh, uh, launched to the space station on the Russian Soyuz, and it's always our rescue vehicle if we need it. And so we, as Americans and Europeans and Japanese, learn Russian, and the Russians learn English. And we have Paolo with us, who's from Italy, so we're we're working on a little bit of Italian, but so far, uh, I think I'm just up to Bon Appetito. Hi, my name is Hannah Lang, and my question is, what is the best part about being in microgravity? best part um, about being in microgravity, you know, you would think it'd be floating around, and that's that's fun, but, um, you know, I associate being in microgravity as, as, you know, being part of this larger mission, and uh, for me, that's what the best part is, is about being part of a team and working at something that's uh, really, really hard, and then, uh, you know, doing well at it and being... Uh, you know, proud of yourself for your accomplishments. And I tell kids, you know, that's something that you guys can do too, you know, in your schoolwork and uh, other activities is work hard at them and then be proud of yourselves when, uh, when you do a good job. Hi, my name is Seth Schulbrock, and uh, my question is, what do you do for recreation? Well, all of us do a lot of um, running, bicycling, and weightlifting every day, um, about an hour and a half or so every day. Um, we do that mostly because we don't walk around on our legs, and so we don't, um, our bones don't maintain themselves. In fact, we lose bone just like some older people do. So we exercise quite a bit, and that's, that's some recreation. And then I think everybody, it's just like on Earth, everybody has their own particular things that they do. Um, I'm still pretty new up here, so I haven't had a lot of free time yet. But I, down on the Earth, uh, when I have some free time, I like to be with my family can't do that up here. So uh, I also like to play the flute. I'm a musician. So I do just a little bit of, of that up here. And I think a lot of us like, oh, <laughs> here's my flute. Um, I, keep it, uh, I keep it out here. It gets to float around. And uh, a lot of us like to, uh, like to read and watch TV and movies just like uh, down there on the earth. 
my name is Kai Rasmussen, and my question is, do you have internet access, and, or do you like to social network like Facebook? Yeah, we uh, we do actually have the uh, an inter internet that is uh, you know connected real time. Although it uh, isn't available all the time because of the satellite coverage, and it's somewhat uh, somewhat finicky. But um, you know, at certain times, it is usable um, and it's useful, and it's a really nice capability to have on board. Um, most of the stuff we do, though, in that area, like social network, uh, networking, email, those kind of things. We don't do it on the real time connected internet because it's not, it's not quite as reliable. What we do is we kind of synchronize our mail with the ground at certain times throughout the day. And, uh, but it works well for staying connected with uh, people on, on the earth. And you'll notice you may know a lot of astronauts do uh, Twitter, and uh, you know NASA has a Facebook account for the International Space Station. So we do some uh, you know social networking outreach that way. My name is Lucas Simpson, and can you notice changes in the Earth? You know, every time we look at down at the Earth, Lucas, it looks uh, different. It depends on the weather. It depends on the light. Um, we can see, uh, you know, certainly all the snow that's uh, been happening in the in the U.S. in the past few weeks. In fact, it's nice for me. I'm always looking for Portland because my stepmom and my and my brothers live in Portland and up in Vancouver, Washington. In fact, I've been to your great museum right there in McMinnville. So I'm uh, glad to be thinking about where you are. Unfortunately, I keep trying to take a picture, and it's often cloudy there in McMinnville. Um, but we do definitely see lots of changes on the Earth. And in fact, we get to be uh, the representative of many scientists up here and take pictures of the Earth. We take hundreds and hundreds of pictures of the Earth every week just to diagnose, you know, how is the Earth doing for these scientists. Hi, my name is Danielle Miller, and I was wondering what are some of the experiments you guys are working on? Well, like I said earlier, I was working on a, uh, a fluid uh, physics experiment today called uh, Marangoni, and it's, uh, it's trying to understand how fluids behave in, in microgravity, because when you take gravity away from, uh, from you know, the, the, the problem you're trying to understand, it, does, uh, it allows you to, to understand things better, and we have a unique environment here to do that. And... Uh, Katie's demonstrating to you here with this uh, bag of water how uh, fluids behave a little bit differently than they do on Earth by making this, uh, this large water ball. I think, though, uh, you know, what, one thing that interests me about the space station is the whole thing in, in itself is a, an experiment. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an experiment in how to make systems that allow people to stay alive for, for uh, you know, long periods of time in space. It's an experiment on the humans to, to understand how they do, do in space. And it's also, you know, learning things that will, uh, you know, enhance our lives on Earth. So the whole thing is one big experiment. We lost that light feed. That's uh, pretty much all right. The thank window. you, guys. So. We appreciate talking to you. Please come see us again here in Mackin. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Yeah, it was great talking to you guys, too, and uh, thanks for all the great questions. Uh, have a great day. Have a great day. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum. Station, we are now resuming operational communications.